Hi, I'm Donna from Art Craft Crazy and today I'm going to answer a question that is asked a real lot on YouTube. This will help you out a lot because some people don't know whether or not they should air dry or oven dry their paper and what difference does it make when you do one or the other. So I'm going to use some everyday tea and some hot water. You don't have to use hot water, but I prefer to. And it, it just seeps the tea a bit better and makes the color come out easily. And you'll be able to see the difference with um, the paper once it's tea dyed and dried, how it feels, how it looks, how it sounds, and how it will fold and work in your book, whether you're going to make a journal or a traveler's notebook style book, which is what I'm going to be making out of some of the papers I've cut today. Now I've also cut my papers a bit shorter than the A4. So in Australia, we use A4. And I've cut that down so that when I fold that in half, that will be suitable for a traveler's notebook. When you colour, you'll get the tea stained around the edge, will give you a beautiful golden brown, especially when you do it in the oven. If you do it all the way, when you cut that off, you've only got it on three sides. So I'm going to cut my, well I have cut mine off first, and then I'll tea dye that, and the colour will be on all the edges, and that will be ready to just fold in half and sew into my book. I've just boiled my jug and I'll get my tea bags out. I'm just, like I said, just using everyday tea bags. I've got a tray that I'm going to use just to dunk my papers in with the hot water, with the tea mixture. And I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ish. It depends on the colour that you want. And I'm just going to pour the water straight in on those tea bags. I'm going to make that pretty deep because I'm colouring 40 sheets of paper. I'm just going to let that seep for a while. And I'll come back and start colouring the paper. Now I've got my oven on low, ready to start drying the paper. I'm just moving the tea bags around to get that uh, so they release the, the colour. Just give them a little squeeze to get all the colour out. So my jug actually boils on a lower temperature. Can have it so I've boiled it on the lowest temperature and it's still very hot. So now all I'm going to do is dunk these papers into the tea mixture. So I'll start off by doing one at a time. Now I've got another tray here. That way I can put my paper in the mixture and see how that nice colour is going. And I'm just going to pop it on there. Now the first, you've got to be very careful because I just ripped that sheet there and these are cut to size. So that sheet is probably no good to me now. But I'll use it for something else but I won't be able to put it in my book. Right, so that sheet now is ready to go into the oven. That's it. That's all you've got to do is just pop it in. Now I've got a second tray so I can speed things up a little bit. Do the same again. Dunk your paper in. You can do a few sheets at a time. It only takes a couple of minutes to dry those papers in the oven as well. Um, I usually set the timer. Once I've done my first one, I'll know how long it takes to dry and then I'll set the timer. 
And like I said, be careful because these are cut to size. You leave them in this tea bath longer if you want more colour. And I can put two over like that. And pop that in the oven. I'll continue on putting my um, paper in here and that will get these a nice colour while the others are um, drying. And then I'll go and cut two more pieces of paper the, so that I don't run short because I just got two tiny tears in that those first two sheets. I'm pretty happy with that colour. It looks great. Take it out. See what I mean about the edges? How they like that. We've got that nice crinkly paper. That took a few minutes. I'll know now, say four or five minutes. I'll just turn it up that little bit to get it going a bit faster. And really all you do is you just keep on doing that until you finish now. So I'm going to be a bit careful now. I can rip that paper very easily. And you just do one at a time. If you want your oven a little bit hotter, turn it up if you want to do, you know, a, a sheet. If you've got two shelves going, you can do two or three sheets every three minutes. Once you get into... A little system it doesn't take very long to do so I can put that one back in the oven and I'll keep going and re rotating those when I finish these I'll show you exactly the same method of um, coloring the papers but the only difference is I'll do them all together put them all in a tray and then air dry them Right, now I'm ready to do the second batch and this will be the air dried batch. Now what I've done is this tray got a little bit cool, the water, so I just put it on my stove and just took the cold out of it and just slightly heated it. Now it's just warm. And that's just personal preference, like I said before. And I'll just keep putting paper for the air dry session in here. Right now I'll put a couple of full sheets in here too, just so you can also see the difference when I do colour the full sheet and then cut it down to size compared to the pre-cut one. And it's quite a hot day here, it's summer in Australia. It's um, We changed into summer on the 1st of December, so it's absolutely beautiful day here today. Look at these blue skies, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure if I told you, I'm doing 10 sheets of these shorter ones for my traveller's notebook. So you've got to make sure you've got a, a deep enough bath to fit all your sheets in when you're doing your air dry. In the oven it's, it's not so bad because you, you know, you're doing one or two sheets at a time. Unless you want to soak them a bit longer and really get them um, coloured. Now I'll leave these in the tray until I walk out into the shed. Now I've got a shed, it's a, a double garage. It's quite a large garage and it's full of craft. Um, it's no room for the car. I've got my car in the carport, but um, my mum passed away last Christmas and she gave me all her craft. We needed to hire a truck to go and pick it up. It was unbelievable how much stuff she had now just have a look at this so anyway I've got my um, table set up in the shed here it's just a long table and I've just put plastic down on the bottom with some towels on top and this paper will just be taken out of the bath and laid on top of the towels and I'll just leave that to dry and because it's a hot day today so it might dry in four hours I'll start laying it out. So I'll put the first bits up on this end. Now I know I can fit three across 
the table. Now I'll just keep going all the way down. I'll butt them up reasonably close because I know they'll all fit then. Some will have a lighter colour than others. It's nice to have a bit of variation. So leave those little pools of tea on top. If you wanted to tip the tea off, you just let it drip for a little bit in the, in the pan before you lay them down. I don't even have to worry about this now. I can just walk away and go inside and do something else. Okay, it's been four hours and they're all dry. They've turned out pretty good. I've got some pretty distinctive markings on a lot of them. Some of them are quite light, but you can see they're all fairly straight. Okay, now I'm back inside. These are the air dried papers. I'll just put these, the A4s aside for now and bring out the oven dried compared to the air dried. Like I said, this was done in the hot water and this water was a lot colder. So there's the difference in the colour. And the paper is a lot more wavy. I'm going to try and do it like that. This one here, the oven dyed, is a lot more wavy. The air dry is a lot flatter. So I can hold them together like that and they're nice and flat. These ones here, still very wavy. So that's the difference between air drying and oven drying. A colour from hot water to colder water and the finish either way is amazing. I'll do the fold test as well. You can see the edges are nice and clean. And that's it. That's the difference on a folded sheet, the air dried and the oven dried. This one lays a lot flatter. This one, I could certainly get it flat if I laid a book on top. I also find that when you tea dye, your pages, it takes a pen a lot better too. Like your pages don't seem to, um, the ink doesn't go through to the other side. When you tea dye it, it seems to stop that. It puts a nice coating on it so you can write on it and it doesn't go through the other side. Now that would depend on your ink pen. If you used a Copic marker, it may bleed through. But just a basic ink pen, that would work really well. Okay, I thought I'd put a few pages together just to show you the difference when they're laying flat. And that one lays a bit flatter, that one's a bit more open. You can sort of see the difference there. Right, now I've brought you over to my mink to show you something. Now I've got my oven dried papers here, They're very quickly all over the place. Now if I was to fold them in half, they'd always be crinkly. The only way I'd get rid of that is to iron them or weigh them down once they're folded. So let's try a little trick that I've discovered. I've turned my mink machine on one, it's on very low, and I'm just going to feed that through. See how it's given a, a it's pinched the edges where they were quite wrinkly? It's pinched them together. But that paper doesn't even feel hot.
just let it go through naturally don't try and pull it out till it's finished and see it's it has ironed it but it, you've you do end up with the crinkles where the wrinkles the creases where the wrinkles really were were dominant but if that's the look you like or could use your mink is a good way to iron out your paper I'll try it on a shorter piece now these are one of my pre-cut pieces I'll, I'll leave that off to the no I'll put it that way difficult to get it in there because it's so wrinkly so I might try that new the side there uh, the next step is to put it in a carrier sheet and let it go through like that there you go now I've got it in if you couldn't be bothered fiddling with it like that just put it in your carrier sheet actually looking okay on this um, smaller piece yeah yeah it worked well very good you just see a few little wrinkles or wobbles or waves but other than that that's turned out a little flatter okay there you go can you see the difference that one's been through the mink on a very low setting. I put that through on setting one. That is the natural piece that's come out of the oven. There is a lot of difference. So depending on whether you like to leave it natural like that or have it ironed or put it through your mink machine, but this is something that I find works well for me. So I'll fold both of those for you just to show you what they look like when they're folded. Okay, just fold that that way. Depending on which side you want your colour to show. Now if I was to fold all of these sheets and then lay them flat with a book on the top that would probably settle down a little bit and it just depends again whether you want that wavy look a little bit of wavy or a lot of wavy leave them alone and just fold them like this make sure I'm folding it the right way I'll go this time I'll go this way hold my center now I've got the center and there's the difference and the piece that went through the mink is there and the just straight out of the oven piece is there now I suppose I should show you an ironed piece so you've got a comparison between the piece that was put through the mink and just your everyday iron Okay, there's my ironed piece and the comparison between the two. This feels a little different. This still got that nice crinkly, even though that's still crinkly, but it's both work. You could use either. This one still got the character to the edges and this one's got those creases so there's the difference in the top sheet that one's through the mink and this one has been ironed okay now i'll try to 
on one of the smaller sheets to do a comparison. I've only got my iron on silk as well. It does give a whole different look to this one. It's more wavy, but that could also be this piece was a wavier piece. And I quite like the mink. I haven't had much success with the iron, and that's why I decided to try the mink. Um, the last time I used the mink, it was really good, so I thought I'd show it to you today. I'll fold this one. So you can see the difference. Okay, so there's our straight out of the oven piece. Our piece put through the mink and our ironed piece. Okay, now this one, still looking all right. There is absolutely nothing wrong with dyeing a full sheet and then folding it and you've got your leftover piece that's got a lot of character. This is the piece put through the mink. So here I'm going to lose that nice golden edge. But in the big scheme of things, it's, it's not going to be a problem because there's going to be so many other pages that will make up for it. And what you could do is just turn them around. Like if that one's there and you've got some colour on it, that way, turn it around so that it's showy one way and as you turn the pages, they'll all be different. I'll just fold that one over. And there's the difference between the page that went through the mink and the page that's come straight out of the oven from the A4 size with the ends cut off. Stay away from the edges if you don't want to change the shape of your edge and just iron the centre. If you don't want to get those wrinkly things here, just stay away from the edge and stay in the centre. And you can keep the character of the paper, how it's naturally dried. That would work as well. So that's not, that's not too bad, that's pretty good. Two different ways, one taking it right to the edge and getting the creases and one stopping short of the edge. Okay, that one went through the mink and I've got some massive creases. And these two were hand ironed. Natural, through the mink and this one's hand ironed. Now here's all my oven dried, tea dyed papers finished. I've done the A4 size to give a comparison to the pre-cut size. Now the only, you see the difference in the colours? This was achieved by using the same tea bath. These went in first and the, being smaller I had the very, very hot water. So they absorbed more colour of the tea and being smaller in the oven, they achieved a more golden brown. These went in when the water was almost cold. It was very lukewarm. So it soaked up less of the tea colour and it was virtually at the end of the, the, um, the bath, the tea bath. So same bath, but just... One at the beginning with hot water and then the water went cold and I achieved this colour. So there they are in their crinkly loveliness. 
Okay, well, I think I've thought of everything to show you. I don't think there's too much more that I can show you. There's um, oh, probably a few more examples, but you know, like if you wanted to put patterns on them um, on the paper, but I'll show you that in another video. But for now, we just used the little puddles of the tea dye to get interest and different colors and tones. And if you want, you could even turn the oven up if you wanted to achieve a more golden brown and stay with the oven method. So there's a few ways that you could get the look that you want by tea dyeing your own papers. Let me know which is your favorite, the air dried or the oven dried and why. And if you've got any tips that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments. I'm Donna from Art Craft Crazy. Thanks for watching and bye for now.